Another project with Petro. You haven't seen this boat before. Yet another boat. I've had a lot of them. But this one um, I, is pretty special because it's a Cape Cod 14 foot cat boat. They're pretty hard to come by, or I should say they're expensive to come by. I actually got this one on eBay uh, for a steal of a price. It was $1,500. Look at these boats. They sell for a lot of money. Uh, up even one that's uh, you know 15 20 years old like this one this was a 2000 so I guess it's 20 years old um, sells for about fifteen thousand dollars in really good condition so the fact that I got this for fifteen hundred dollars um, was awesome fine only downfall is it was in San Diego and I had to ship it out here so what I'm gonna be working on is this rub rail next winter I'm gonna completely redo this boat when this skiff is finished I'm going to uh, potentially put a new combing on it, uh, possibly paint the decks. One of the things that I need to do is completely replace this rub rail. It's not all that bad, but uh, I'd prefer to have it uh, in natural wood, and the owner before me had this painted up in green. So uh, I know it's all going to come off, but what I'm going to do, actually, there's a rotted section over here. And because I don't want to do, I want to do sort of a good enough repair to get through this year um, before next winter when I strip it all off. And I have, I don't have enough white oak to do the whole boat from my scrap pieces of pile from the skiff. Um, but I do have enough to do a section here. So I'm going to try to splice in a piece and it's going to be at a square stock. So I'm going to have to get the router out and, and mill it and so forth. But it uh, should be a fun little project and hopefully should get me through the summer without having to do major repairs. Okay, so I've found where I think is the limit of the rot. I don't want to go too far. Again, I'm going to end up replacing this uh, in the near future anyhow. But And if I start making it too hard, it starts to really take a, a, a hard radius when we get beyond this point. So what I'm going to try to do is I'd like to do a 45 degree miter. And I'm going to have to do this by hand, uh, which will be kind of tricky with my Japanese saw. So I'm going to do it there, round it off and go into here. And then I'm going to attempt to do it on the other side as well. So this is going to be a little bit of finesse here, but uh, we'll see how we do. Then the, obviously the piece that I shape and make for this is going to have that miter because I'm hoping this one little section where there's actually a screw here, you can't tell, is when it's glued up, I'm good, it's going to be holding in this other piece that we're putting together. So. A little trial and error, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I tried to cut this one right here, but um, it was actually softer than I thought in this position as well. So I'm going to have to go back one more screw position, which kind of upsets me a little bit because this piece is getting longer and I don't, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. So I'm thinking as I go, but there's nothing I can do about it because uh, literally it's, it's all soft and rotted right where my finger is here. So I'm going to have to go back a little farther.
Okay, I think I found a piece of oak that might just fit. There's some checking on the front of it, um, but I think once I uh, uh, use my router and round it over, I think that will do away with the checking. And it's actually just the right thickness all the way around. And it's actually, it's going to be close. It's, with, it's within, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe a quarter of an inch of being long enough. So uh, we're going to work on that one and get the thickness going on this sucker. But I'm excited. The cuts and everything I think are coming out pretty good. So I'm going to use my uh, depth square here. I don't know exactly what you call it, but adjustable square to get the right thickness so that I can start figuring out how to, what kind of router bit I need and what kind of thickness I can rip this down to. So Looks like we can take uh, about a quarter of an inch off of it, which is good because that'll make it flex a little bit easier. I'd rather not have to steam this because I don't have a steam set up. But if I do, I'll figure it out. All right, we'll keep going. pretty good shape. I've got everything pre-drilled. I marked it all. Obviously did quite a bit of it uh, um, in the high-speed camera version so you don't have to be bored by the whole thing. But I'm going to put some epoxy on this and then I'm just going to get some window and door seal. I should use epoxy but just window and door seal on the back and that's just to seal it up to the hull, get the drip. If water comes off the deck it can drip through and just looks awful kind of like what you see here. So doesn't really do anything to stick it to the boat because you want to be able to make it removable. And then once I do that, I'm actually going to go through and I know everybody's going to kill me on this, but keep in mind this is temporary. I'm going to go through and once this is all sealed and epoxy to go glued, I'm going to go and get some filler and I'm going to fill these holes instead of doweling it. The reason for that is the rest of this is all painted. It's very old. It's been filled before. 
So with a painted finish, I'm not too concerned about getting it. When I completely replace the rub rail, I'll go back and do it with dowels the, the proper way. But this, to get me through the summer, it's a nice piece of white oak. It's going to be super strong. It'll be fine. I'm also going to use G-Flex epoxy on this, which is meant for white oak and sort of hard um, uh, glued material. So it should work out pretty well. I'll put you back on um, hyperspeed camera fast mode. Okay, so I think we got everything together. It actually looks pretty good. I'm happy about it. You'll see in my time lapse that I was struggling a little bit with getting this piece on, but I, you know, after struggling a little bit because I just didn't have the, enough hands on the job, um, I was able to do it. I'm very happy with the G Flex epoxy. Always does a good job. Filled all the holes with it. Put a little filler in it, and also this piece right here. You'll see. Um, this actually broke up a little bit on me because when I put the drill in, uh, when I put the screw in to tighten this corner down, it um, pulled away on me and then it caused that to crack up. But it wasn't rotted, but it split up on me, so I got a little bit frustrated with that. But put the G-Flex back on, and as you guys can see, I, I think we are uh, got a pretty good joint for uh, being um, a a temporary piece i think we've got some uh pretty good uh, i don't know if i can go along on the side with it but i think we've got some pretty good uh um finished job here for some scrap wood and material so the next step is i'm going to put some paint on this and um because i'm going to keep it the green that it has been because you can see it doesn't match here because of the different ages of the white oak so I think this is a white oak. That's traditionally what this boat had, but maybe uh, it might have aged a little bit, but maybe it might be a kind of mahogany or something like that. But anyway, I'm going to put paint on this, and then I'll show you what it looks like it painted, but I'm, I'm pretty happy for a temporary job from the uh, scrap wood pile. Another successful project with Petro. I think we're done. Everything came out great. Very, very happy with how the transition came out. I mean, you really can't even tell uh, where the repair was, which makes me really happy. You will see, though, I made a rookie mistake, and I forgot to close the garage door, painted everything, and wind blew and sawdust on my um, new paint job. So I got to put another coat on it anyway, so that's okay. I'm um, just frustrating when that happens and I'm stupid for uh, not doing enough prep work. So we're in great shape, very happy. Hope you enjoy this one. We'll see you next time.